It's like a pizza crunch without the butter James Price, known as the Springburn Scorsese, you're a talented director that's worked with the likes of Peter Mullen and even directed a music video for Michael Imperioli, who played Chris in The Sopranos. So in order to get an insight into your background, can you take me back to what life was like growing up in Springburn? Um, I man, growing up in Springburn, I was uh, I was kind of the court jester of the young Springburn peg. I was just the wee funny one that... I was too scared to go up the front of the fighting. I was, I was all standing in the back, just cheerleading. <laughs> just slinging one liners and see that. Oh, hundred percent, man! I just hide in the bushes, not just watching as the police came. And I couldn't run, man. So I just hid. In them. I remember, I remember one time I hid in a bin when we got chased after the police, and uh, and I had the foot nobody seen it. And then when we got back to Gallery Street, man, I remember one boy came back and said, like, "He hid in a bin." Aye, right. <laughs> uh, Couldn't live it down for about a year. So where did that come from? See the kind of like the court jester kind of thing. Was that always a part of your personality, or was that maybe a kind of survival technique? Kind of survival technique. I was lucky. I had a big cousin and uh, my dad that were quite well quoted in Springburn, so I was kind of protected. Like the name did. I think that's probably how I got a pass a lot of the time. Man. Uh, I mean, but I was kind of like I was. I was kind of a runt to the crowd, man. And I was quite a sickly teenager, man, with the, the Crohn's disease and the. Uh, so I couldn't fight, so I had to, I, being funny was my weapon. man. Right, <laughs> so is it Crohn's disease that affected you since like fucking day dot? Aye man, aye, my man's convinced I had it since I was born, but I can, I can remember it kicking in around about 11, 12, and I, that was when it kind of got bad. Right. It was kind of saved me though man, because I wasn't going to school much, and they were close to taking my mat to court for like, my attendance, uh -huh. and uh, literally as they were about to take my mat to court, fucking got a diagnosis of Crohn's disease right. so it's weird it's like it's a blessing in disguise <laughs> ah you know it definitely <laughs> saves your mouth with a red face ah, 100%, you know? <laughs> what is it how does that affect your life the main thing man I think is fatigue you know what I mean but the uh, I'm, I'm I'm always I've always been getting nervous to talk about it, but I know I don't care about it. Like uh, I was, I never told anybody in like the film world because I was like they might not like me direct. I think I'm too no well. Right. But, okay. uh, but I'm but I, I, I can I manage it quite well myself. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm I'm doing alright with it. But it's uh, I've mainly fatigue and just I mean a bit of pain in here now. But that's it. How do you manage it? Is it mainly diet? Diet's the main thing, man. I'm murdered, but I don't follow, don't follow the rules that I apply for myself. But, ah, uh, no, it's always a good food uh, that you got out in it. I totally, man. And everything's got gluten in it, man. Everything. It's, it's like glue. It holds the food together. That means so it's like literally in every single thing. You go to farm foods, you can't even find one thing without gluten in it. No, definitely no, no, no. not. Mate, I found myself, this is the kind of route I'm good doing. I'm starting to eat soya yogurt and I was looking like, for totally. gluten-free. I think it was gluten-free wraps or something the other day and I kind of caught myself like that. Am I, am I turned? Have I turned into one of these? Nah, I, I, don't I don't need it for health reasons. Don't get me wrong. I stopped to drinking cow's milk because I read there was some amount of pus in it. And totally. just seeing I drank cow's milk, I'd always feel dead. Like my joints just feel felt dead and flamed. So and one of the things that flares up my disease, hundred percent. So I, I, I can't Since drink I milk. Since I cut it out, mate, I've noticed a lot more energy. I agree, I hundred percent. So that's how the I same fight. with gluten, man. I think gluten makes me sluggish. It makes me tired. I've man, fight too much bread or anything. So. Mm, nah, because I don't really yeah. eat bread. I Raps is like the close thing, or maybe a burger bun, or having a burger, you know what I mean? So, I totally, I said, but I'm not like a loaf of breed fucking sausage eating kind of guy. No, I'm, I'm the that. worst Scotsman ever. I don't eat fried shit, I don't eat bacon, I don't eat fry ups. Oh, no, no, well, I must admit, I'm a dream. I've got, a, I've got an addiction to these fucking microwaveable haggis, neeps, and tatties. Oft, I don't know why. I know it's not, it's not Take good you back for me. to the fucking cop shop. Day I, or I, think I can remember my past life, know what I mean? I was, uh, know what I mean, when I was kept with William Wallace or something eating haggis. I don't know, <laughs> rab, rabby bums. Modern day Wallace, man, <laughs> out the micro. <laughs> so, when did you first start getting interested in movies? It's weird, man. It's almost felt like a destiny thing, man. It's, just, it's strange. I'd never had a backup plan. I've, and um, I've been obsessed with films since I was a Wayne. I think my dad was really overprotective of me. Right. Especially for the first 10 years of my life before I became a teenager. And I think to keep me in the house, because I stayed in my mother for the first 10 years of my life. And uh, my brother was always, my brother Ryan, he was always in the gang fighting and all that. And he, he was always causing a rock. But, uh, my dad kind of kept me insulated with videos, so I had like the biggest VHS collection you can imagine, man, as a way, you know, because I was obsessed with horror films and 
You know, my mom and dad were showing me it was watching eighteens when I shouldn't have be. So uh, they, mm. they, uh, they they had this whole script planned for me to say in school, like when they pulled you up, say we showed you the, like the behind the scenes making of Freddy and all that and how they do it, so that you you don't want to so you, can't, you don't see you actually watch that exactly. Yeah, right, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So I had to I had to have a whole alibi. <laughs> right. So what would, what would you say was like the first film you'd watched that kind of was like ah wow it's like it kind of sucked you in to the film itself. Was there any kind of standout? One for you? Oh, there's a lot, man. I mean, like, Lost Boys, man, was one. Like, when I was, like, you know, any time that came on, I was just, it was, like, euphoria. And when I was, like, a drug for me, like, watching the Lost Boys. Like, I still love that film, man. Like, uh, I think it's a perfect film. Uh, there's a lot. I, Robocop, you know what I mean? I love Robocop. And I think mm. Robocop, when you watch it now, it's a prophetic masterpiece because they were living in old, old Detroit, man. It's, it's a lot of... Sh- Stuff in Robocop just became like a modern day life. Ah, it's just, it's just fascinating. But um, I so just obsessed with them. But I mean, the main one was seeing My Name Is Joe and Orphans and seeing these Scottish films because that kind of sparked me like about nine ten when I was like, oh, they make films here. Because in my head, I was always thinking like, I need to set it in LA. You know what I mean? I need to get Kiefer Sutherland in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so it was like when I saw a Scottish film, it was like, oh my god, man! Especially Orphans in particular. My dad worked in a pallet factory, like a character in it, and people were always like shooting themselves with nail guns to put a claim in and stuff. So there was a lot of that in orphans, and uh, my big brother was getting stabbed constantly. <laughs> And, oh, uh, is he? Aye. aye. So, so it was almost a, mirrored in your own life. Was aye, it that sense of relatability? Then? Totally, man. I never had that before. So Orphans was like, a, I just really, I, I put Peter Moore did a stunning job. I still think it's the best Glaswegian film, man. It's a really important film for me, man. Ah, I and so I was chuffed to see Steve McCall was on here, man. He's, he's, a, he's, he's brilliant in Orphans. Ah, no, Stephen's great, man. Stephen, he's one of the actors I've always seen. I seen him in the wee man. The one, the most prominent role I seen him in was in High Times. High Times was great, man. See, that came out, I was in school, so right. it reminded me. It was kind of like remember. I don't know. We're kind of similar in ages, so it mm. might have happened with you. Like when sailing, when still game or something was on like every Monday. Yep. When you were in school, you like, ah, Monday still games on. Nah, totally. I remember like High Times on. Like ah, yeah, she'd get back when people used to watch. The Do you telly. remember when High Times was on? They'd put it on at like, crazy times, like three in the morning and all that. It's like I don't know what they were doing with that show, man. Like, oh, did they? I can't. Aye. Many series did they make? Was it just one? I think it was two or three, man. I so I work I work with the producer of High Times. Uh, she she produced Dog Days, Carol. She was a brilliant producer and. Um, uh-huh. I, high Times was a big thing for me too. I was like, I loved uh, Jim Morrison face, like just another Saturday night. He's brilliant in that. And, uh, I, I see. It's, it's it, sure. it was that long ago when it was on, man. I, I just, I remember Steven's character so well because he's Rab the Mad Stoner. Oh, he's brilliant. He's the best in it. I know. He was, he was, he was, I was convinced he's a Mad Stoner. I know, totally. Because he was one of the people see Steven as well. Sometimes I've met people who have still gaming that. I don't name them. And when you see them in the ca- you see their character, you like you love their character, then you see them in person, you like that guy is that's depressing not, me. I know that's and not who he is. I, I thought I was going to be like the same with Steven, and I met him. He was just pure full of dead friendly. Love like, it, that, right? Just I know. I've, had, uh, I've must admit, I've been blessed, man. Majority of people that I became friendly with, like the, the prominent in the film game, uh, that I was a fanny for years. I was always scared to meet them. Because as you know, you don't meet your heroes, ah, but um, a lot of them haven't let me down, man. They've just been absolute angels in my life, man. But uh, so there is a couple, and I mean, there is like, oh, that guy's no, that's no he is. That guy's that. a great actor. Yeah, he's a great because actor, he's an but absolute I... wank person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a great job. Hundred percent. Two colours and uh, fucking camera. Hundred percent. I was a fan of him. So see, at that age, you were like nine, ten. That's when you started to like, you got your real taste. Uh, films and then what Scottish movies and that kind of thing right. was there any like, idea or thought in your mind how you wanted to be involved in the process of making it did like, a thought occur that I wanted to direct films I wanted to make films at I, what point so as a kid that was like a writer like, I didn't really know but like, I was still learning about the director inside and so I was obsessed with Stephen King right. so also I'll be a writer like Stephen King and then I'll, they'll, they'll make my book get into like creep show and it and stand by me, you know what I mean? Like, I thought that's how it would work. Uh, but then when I learned how it worked, I kind of, I was about 11, 12, I had ideas for short films. Because I actually saw, so I had the Orphans DVD, I remember buying it for cash converters, I bought it with Summer of Sam, weirdly, which Michael Imperial who wrote, really, you know what I mean, talking about destiny and just strange things, mm-hmm. the manifestations. But um, I had the Orphans, because we're part of the same MGM 
like get release and it was like MGM downtown they called it it was like these cool DVD is it like covers. a two sided DVD thing ah so get, it was like, like we put like them two, together like, like when the you used set. to get like Rocky and Rambo or they something like that they kind of died and made a couple of pictures but they used to call it a disc set or something like that aye they had like, so, like, aye, aye. fucking remember the days that I mean. but the Orphans DVD had the short films on it oh. had Close and Fridge uh, I mean, right. fridge, I think, my, my, right, okay, okay. Uh, Magdalene Sisters had Fridge, but it had Close on it, and Close to me is like a perfect shot for them. It was done by Peter Mullen and the stars in it. It's like stunning. It's like the Scottish Taxi Driver. It's a masterpiece of so like, filmmaking, and uh, that clicked. I was like, oh, so you make a short film first, and then people see that, and then they gave you a million pounds to make a feature film, so that's how it worked. Eureka. Eureka, bye. So I had all these ideas for like wee weird horror films that I was going to make. I still remember some of them. Some of them have came back to me recently, and I've been like, that might still work, you know what I mean? That might be an essence of that. So was that just like an idea, some ideas floating about in the head, but you never actually like, like articulated them on paper? You never I, I, so I had a bunch of scribbles, man, but it was, you know, nonsensical, but I did, right, I did okay, well, okay. Didn't I? So we see, at that stage, when you're having these ideas, was right. it more of a pipe dream rather than... Totally, I got 100%. This? I had total, total pipe dream. Total pipe dream up until, you know, I remember when I had my wee, I had a wee girlfriend when I was like 17, 18, and um, I, I nearly died. I took a really bad Nobel, and... Uh, what were the Crohn's? Ah, I had a, we did a perforated bill. I had a perforated bill for a few days before the bef fuck, before it was detected. Did you need to get an operation on it? Aye, so they, they thought it was going to be a regular surgery, but when they opened me up, I was filled with fucking green pus, so I ended up... Fuck's sake. I think 11 hour surgery. Think Oof, moved, was that like an infection or something? Ah, septicemia, MRSA, oh, all that, man. Uh, nearly snuffed it. <laughs> nearly snuffed it. But I had a girlfriend at the time who really stuck by me, man, absolute angel. Don't know if I should name her. I've not been in touch since, but she's uh, I, her name's Amy. She just stuck by me, and uh, I ended up I had like a, I've never really admitted this, but I had like a stoma bag type thing for a few years, and um, oh, did you, eh? I kind of, I mean, I messed with me mentally. But during that time, I became obsessed with reading screenplays, right? And I taught myself how to write screenplays by basically. I thought I had the screenplay of Pulp Fiction. I'd put Pulp Fiction on and I'd read the screenplay as the film was playing and I worked out what it all meant, interior, exterior and everything and I kind of just picked it up for the end. Right, okay, And okay. I, think, I always said to her, like, I want to make films one day and and then when the, we eventually f broke up, I, was, I think I always had it in me, like, I need to prove her that I was serious about that, you know what I mean? So I, I think I might have been the, 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 the driving force at the beginning when I was about 19, 20. Yeah. Sometimes you see that energy for a breakup that you get. It's oh, it's almost, a bit... Does it send you into a wee spiral of depression? So you need totally. something to kind of lift you to it. Some people just start hanging about with their pals they start going out and I, So for me, if I'm ever... I've not really ever been in a serious relationship anyway, but times <laughs> I've been seen birds and then obviously it's felt to fuck and you've been that way and I'm like, ah, fuck it, I need to go. It's as if I just put it up a gear and focus. It's almost like an escape. Uh, totally, man, 100%. And it's like, um, you, but you forget that when you eventually, when eventually things start taking off, you forget that that was the spark. You know what I mean? That was what the driving force initially was like just being sad. Uh, <laughs> right so if you there. look at, but if you look at, let's say if you use Conor McGregor as an example. Like, uh, totally. What like he thought, like, he went for Benoit like the Brew, the Irish version of the Brew, whatever they call it. Right. Benefits, let's just say that. And then he fought his way to becoming, might probably a billionaire now. And now, when you watch him, he's just not get that same fire anymore. And it's nah, that it's thing. It's like, I know, I know. It's when you see yeah. all these people, they're mainly fighters, or people who come into the struggle, it's totally. what makes them great because they give you that That's why I think I'm, I'm kind of like a, self-loathing and I punish myself I make myself still hungry you know what I mean I make sure I've still got that fire in me and I think that's how I'm you know I'm, I'm always skint <laughs> I'm, I'm still in me <laughs> but I was on benefits for years as well man I, I couldn't have, uh, with the bag and all that I was so me messed up mentally and uh, eventually got that reversed the surgery got rid of that and uh, shout out to Mr Chong surgeon that saved Mr. my Chong. life Mr Chong man, the, Mr Chong Mr Gallus surgeon in Glasgow saved my life uh, a lot of surgeons would have probably just called that red flag of things. Was that it. a heavy fucking dodgy surgery? Aye, man, and he, he saved my life and put me back together again. Like a uh, Humpty Dumpty, man. So he's like, uh, <laughs> he, uh, aye, great man. Uh, by uh, after that, man, I, like, the early 20s, then I, was, then I was like, how did I get into this? And I, so I acted in a bunch of student films. Oh, did but, you? Hopefully, nobody ever finds it because I had ruined like ten student films. <laughs> I think they just couldn't find an actor, so they just kept putting me in all of them, all these different students. And I was 
horrendous in these films, man. To be so. honest, the scripts weren't great. <laughs> Wanda played a gangster clown. That was probably the best. A I gangster clown? A gangster clown. I was probably my shining moment. Aye. What, like a clown that's a gangster? It, it was like a clown's doing a drug deal, but all selling each other balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, I, I know. Oh, so the thing is, the most heartbreaking thing, but was I was going to these people because I needed camera equipment and stuff. So I was going to main scripts, being like, I'll act in your thing, will you help me make this? Not one of them helped me make one of my films, but Bastards. I know. Aye, I mean, and then no, the annoying clones, thing is, none of them have become, none of them stuck it. None of them really, I don't think any of them actually wanted to be filmmakers, I think they just wanted to do something in college. Uh, it sounds you know? like they didn't take it too seriously. Like, like, imagine if I get mad, <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, obviously creativity is quite a vast, expansive world, but I don't know. I don't want to be in the room where fucking clowns <laughs> dealing in balloons is like the fucking idea that makes it to the cut, know what I mean? I know, I know. Yeah, I know. Fence, oh, totally. I know, and the, um, the, the clown thing, man, the, was, was the best. I think about that. I mean, doing another that? one's right. So, see what you say. Was see, there was another one where I knocked down a, 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 a motorcyclist that just came back to me. I forgot for this. Knocked down a motorcyclist, and then he comes back and kills us all. I couldn't even drive. So, I was like, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> no, fake it. Like, I know, exactly. Was it one of the ones that just had to kind of shake the ah, Exactly, and, and act like driving. I'm driving. I, and then I remember being like, oh, no. <laughs> Oh no, he knocked the guy down. You know, I was terrible. So see, like, being an actor. I'm a better though? actor now, though, man. If anyone wants to cast me, I'm. I'm, I'm so do you like the actual acting side? Because I wasn't too sure. If I you do mel- enjoy it now, man. I, I got a wee, I got a wee bug for it, man. There's a young filmmaker I acted for called Ryan Pollock and acted in this short film Bluebird, which is you can watch online. And I feel like I did not too bad a job. And uh, I, 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 I don't want to be. You know, I want to be Harry Dean Stanton. I want to be a wee character actor that's in the, you know, gets a wee kind of side roles. I never want to be the main leading like guy. Like a cameo type one? Ah, exactly, like man. Tarantino the Tarantino, ever. aye, man. Always photo role in Pulp Fiction, the Tarantino role that Steve Buscemi should have played that. I always thought he made a, a, a better job with that. Mm. I, think, I like Tarantino a lot in it, though. I think he's great in it. I know, he knows how he says his own dialogue really well, but I, I, I'm intrigued. I would be intrigued to see how Steve Buscemi would have done that because it feels like a role for him. Aye, uh, that's kind of similar. Isn't it? Well, Very that aye, character, aye. I see what you mean with that character. Aye, because uh, Tarantino, he played the role where he's, this isn't the thing with storage. Aye, that yes, guy, yes, that guy, yes, aye. Yes, aye. Aye. See, do you know, <laughs> see Tarantino, right? He gives himself like, the baddest roles. It's like, <laughs> you ever seen a, you've seen it from dusk till dawn oh of course Sunday, I remember seeing a meme somewhere like Quentin Tarantino literally wrote a script <laughs> where he go what was her name is it Eva Sal, Mendes Salma Hayek Salma uh, Hayek to fucking um, put her toes in his mouth and pour fucking whiskey, whiskey or something I know I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and you need it like this kid's a fucking genius I know but well, uh, he's I got some in it I've no good that kind of I've no good that kind of guts with my scripts. I know, one day, one that day. Balls, <laughs> man. Fair play, no, to totally. man. I love from dust to dawn, no man. So I think it's a brilliant film, man. It's, it's a crazy it's ass film. It's you so think good. It's going one way and then it just. My ma always says it. She's always like, I just wish it stayed the crime film, and then it go. See so if you vampires. split that film in two, you could have two separate films. Totally, man. It's the first one's kind of like the getaway, man. It's like a brilliant, you know what I mean? Get to the Mexican border and get away film. It's a solid crime film I mean and really well made and uh, I just love I think the dynamic between I don't think George Clooney George Clooney that and Out of Sight I think are my favourite films is but he just had such a raw energy man I just I thought he was brilliant on that see with George Clooney he's one of the actors I was talking to Stephen about this the other week and like you get actors and then you get character actors so you'll get characters actors like George Clooney where it's, totally. it's George Clooney so I want to be a character actor that's what I want to be see totally, with George yeah. Clooney and Dust Till Dawn I yeah. saw him as the character that's interesting he's totally. he, he very different the type he doesn't usually play he played like maybe look at like Ocean's Eleven where he played a bit of a it was like a likeable bad guy I but did, with that I, it was I, like I, 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 I fucking I was willing, willing to kill that whole family you know what I mean and that's my main thing man with a lot of these actors like to me Tom Cruise is stunning actor but his best films to me are Magnolia and Collateral because he plays bad people mm-hmm. and there's just something good people are really good at playing bad people I, I, I feel like I, I wish a lot of actors had more guts to especially as Luke Stars to play bad people Johnny Depp's good I think Johnny Depp makes some good choices with his roles mm. he see, always plays bad guys see what I think it is it's see where so see if you get let's see the likes of Tom Cruise you, for example they usually play like, good guys exactly. good characters it's probably easier for them because they've got that image to fit into that mould whereas to be a bad guy they need to suddenly change totally. their image so they, they need to kind of think they need to act a lot more in the I sense totally they need to man. become a character like, 
like Owen Wilson or something like that. I just I can just fit in as Owen Wilson. Or they Aye. can use their personality to be that character, but they can't use their personality because it's likable. Totally, it's likeable. you can't be a likable. You know, Owen Wilson did one film role, man. I watched it recently when he's uh, on holiday with his family with, with Pierce Brosnan, and it's a, like a serious thriller. But the secret that he did really well was he just played it like himself. You did know he? what I mean? What's it so, called? Why am I forgot the name of it? It's one word. Um, is that an old film? No, it's recent. It's the uh, past five years, I think. Uh, yeah. But it's one of the ones that's been under the radar. Uh, but it's a solid, solid, really well-made film. Yeah, because he's usually known for his kind of like rom coms. It's the only time kinda... he's done it, I think. It's the only time he's played a role like that. Uh, so it's interesting. And, uh, but it's, uh, I played a, a part in the film like that. But the secret way was he, he, did, he played it close to himself, so it wasn't a... You know, wasn't it too unbelievable? Aye, aye, aye. Maybe that's probably what it is. It's like... Pe- it's probably why it's went under the radar as well, man, because he's no nah, exactly. he's no tickling the comfort. No, hundred percent. Of everybody who watches no, Owen Wilson to see Owen Wilson in some funny wee comedy, but it's a heartfelt comedy. Well, that's my that thing, man. I became really good friends with Jonathan Watson, man, for the only excuse. And uh I've got a project I really want to do with him and I want to cast him against type. And I think that there's a, a real fear people kinda of pigeonhole people. And I think these, if you can do comedy, I think you can do anything, man. Like Robin Williams, you know, I think there's a... Nah, there just seems to be a real fear of casting comedy actors in dramatic roles. And, that, uh, and I love Uncut Gems, that's one of my favourite films. And I thought, you know, that's the kind of stuff I want to make. Aye, uh-huh. yeah. uh, because it's that thing as well, it's with the, the actors too. It's like, are they willing to push themselves out of their comfort zone? And plus as well, see, like a comedy actor could probably get like 10 roles being that comedy actor. So exactly. maybe they're just looking at it for longevity or as well. Do I play a character that's totally against everything I've played in the past, but risk push myself out there? So that's well, just the thing, man. I definitely. I mean, Watson, Jonathan Watson is totally up for it, and he's. But one is Jonathan Watson again. Is that a guy? Well, that's good. I think I make for you. I know because yeah, yeah, there's yeah. so many. I know. People. I know. I don't I know, know the name, but I know. See, I, when you said that, as the first one popped my head, but I just wanted to be sure. Just hang me the tea. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. I know. He's hilarious, man. I know. I but he's a brilliant actor, and I I just think there's a fear in Scotland. Just taking chances a wee bit. Ah, yeah, definitely, uh, man. Uh, and it's like that. I think that transcends in any, if it's media, sport, I whatever, totally. man. It's like, especially media. The media in Scotland is fucking, it's garbage in comparison. I it's know. Like just, there's no really much of a push in it. So, no, no. Do, that's what a question I like to ask you as well. Do you find, with class you's working class, you come for the scheme, Springburn, you come <laughs> about gang fighting. No you know one of the people that, oh, I was born in Springburn, but I went to fucking West End Academy or that. No, no, totally you actually came for the scheme. <laughs> you still stay in the scheme. I know. Have you found, is that acted as a block for you in this industry? I mean, I can't say it's acted as a block, but I feel there is a real, and it's, I cast a lot of non-actors and stuff, and uh, I always feel, I don't like even call them non-actors because they're brilliant actors, but, um, there is a horrible feeling that you get, especially in the beginning when I was making my first short films. It feels like you get p- picked up for a wee bit. You get picked up at the scheme and you're brought into the world of art and creating and then you're put back in the scheme and you're just you're just a wee bam again. You know uh, what I mean? So it's this feeling of being picked up and put back down. It's quite... It's, it's almost like a, just a bad come down. You know what I mean? You just feel dead sad inside. And, um, I want to smash back to reality. Totally, man. And, uh, and I'm, still, I'm still dealing with it. Mm, uh, I can know. imagine. Is no. there any, do you find, is there any kind of divide? Do you feel with people maybe that are, that come from these mere affluent areas that have probably went to this prestigious school or whatever, or because their family knows this person? Does that ever? Totally, come man. I mean, that, that is a thing, man. But I mean, as far as the nepotism thing goes, I mean, if I ever made it successful, I'd make sure all my family were sorted in the ah, game. No, 100%, I mean. of so I don't disagree with it. But the other thing is, I mean, the the the, 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 the thing that, you know, upper middle class people have got that's a weapon that's like a, they can use is the. They've got money, so they do. They can persevere longer. Whereas the working class person, you know, it's easy, it's easier for the others to get up. Know what I mean, because you kind of you don't have the financial means to keep going. You know, so it's like you can. It's easy to get up and just say that I can't handle this. Uh, it's the survival instinct. Uh, so it? I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm, I've just not got a backup plan, man. I'm, I'm, I'm enduring till the end. Uh, <laughs> I'm not stopping. See, in my opinion, though. I think having a backup plan is an admittance of preconceived failure. Totally. You know what I mean? Totally. Because what, what are you going to back up? 100%. You always, you always, you always just end up using it. It's the slight if you've got a backup plan, you're going to use it. 100%. It's a slight, 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 slight hurdle. You'll, you'll definitely use it. And it's that, uh, that's that motivation for the struggle because see if you take away a backup plan, you're right on. Oh, I need to make this successful. Exactly. I've got a fucking choice. Exactly. And that's 100%. when you start to... 
that's summoning something. You, you think back to it, see if I could can ba- compare it back to like our, our ancestors. Mm-hmm. Like when you were what, fucking, even as back, far back as like 500 years ago, but for, up to that point, people had to hunt to survive. Exactly. You didn't have a choice. Like, no, ah, no. Nah, I'm not going to go hunting today. Like, but do that, you're, you and your full family will starve. Definitely. You've not got a choice. No, when you're back against the wall, you're like, right, I need to get up. No, definitely. I'm, Ill, I'm not feeling up to it. Like, Aye, 100%. That's the discipline and I think that's it. even in the, you know, I mean, even, even the Maz and Dad's generation, they had that, they've got that up and go where it's like, you know, I think that, I mean, I just, some, you end up realising that your parents, and I mean, they're just humans, and they're like you, and they, but they really had to just, did like, for sickness or anything, and they couldn't keep going, they couldn't stop, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I mean, there was no choice, so it's, uh, ah, it's a fascinating thing. I think our, our generation's a bit softer, man. Ah, uh, a million percent, million percent, plus as well, we, just how far we are, we've progressed, we, like what, you've got what like, laptops. You've I know, hundred percent. The internet. You've got what like, playstations, all that kind of stuff. Definitely, it makes things easier. I think. I think like it is easier to make like I know this, that the thing everybody says is like God, you can just shoot a film on your phone, and you can. Yeah, it can be done. Like Sean Baker did it with Tangerine, an American fantastic film, and uh, but there's also an oversaturation of content. So it's like kind of you know you well competition in a sense to. Make stuff you need, you need to have a certain standard of quality. Nah, there's, there's, you need to kind of have that niche or stand out in some sort. I mean. Totally, yeah, you need to have something. I nah, definitely 100%. 100%. So, yeah. can you tell me about the first thing you actually wrote and directed? I totally, it was, um, I'd wrote a bunch of scripts and I, I just didn't have much luck. I got some really horrible emails out of people, I'd <laughs> send them everywhere. And uh, some people just don't what want kind me. of emails were you getting back? Just like, do not send me unsolicited scripts. Full stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I was like, all right. I'm sorry. I'll just send a dick pic instead. I should have. I should have. I should have. I couldn't find the right angle. Um, <laughs> but the first thing I wrote and directed was a short film called uh, Concrete and Flowers. And um, I actually buried the film for a long time. It starred uh, a great actor who's a drama teacher in Carlton now called Jordan O'Hara. He's a good pal, man, and he's uh, really great. He was amazing in the shot. Uh, but I was so self-conscious, I felt I'd made a bad film, so I buried it. And then I, I worked on a like a training course called Jump Cut, and I worked as a, there was locations, and I was uh, the assistant, third assistant director, so I was just like taking the walkie-talkies and stuff like that. But then the second year they did that, I sent a script in, and... Uh, that got made called Drop Off Michael it was directed by a good friend of mine called Zam Salim who's a brilliant director and that short film really did well but then my first short film I kept buried until 2019 and uh, my producer of the High Times Carolyn Sinclair Kid she really liked it and uh, it made me like it made me realise oh, I didn't make a bad film I made something good because I think everything was great about the film the actors were all great I just felt Adel not did my part right and the uh, I ended up just editing that wee bit and um, with the editor and uh, I ended up getting televised on BBC Scotland and it did, did quite well at the film festival. Fantastic. That. So people looked at it as a new short film but it was my first short film and uh, it did pretty well. That's interesting. You always find see in any kind of creative endeavour, you always find see the stuff you're like, this is trash, nobody's going to like this, this is the stuff that does best. I, that's the way I feel about all my stuff. You know? <laughs> I mean, there's some, there's some <laughs> it's a good attitude right? to have, I suppose, because right, totally. then, then that way, even if it, if it has moderate success, you're like, ah, yeah, I thought it'd be I'm great. I'm saying that's it. I, well, definitely, it's, it's, a good, it's a good way to be, man, have low, standard, like, low expectations. <laughs> so why yeah. did, what was it about it that made you self-conscious? I just I felt like I, I just I just didn't feel like I stuck the landing. I felt like I'd just did a bad job. I felt like I'd under directed the actors and um I feel like the script wasn't I felt like the script needed something more. It was based on my I had a friend who was passed away in Springburn who was he was, was murdered, uh, called Jason Bird, who was he was like one of my protectors in Springburn, like nobody messed with me because like, his pals was in. But it was, it was, it was, it was not a fight, he was just a lovely boy, he was like a, just a really nice boy. And Lee loved films, he was obsessed with films, and uh, losing him caused a lot of trauma. So it was, just, it was short, the short films kind of about, about that, about just that, they had the pain of losing a friend and right, okay. a family member. And uh, I, it was kind of my response to that. But And I think maybe that part of it made it a bit heavy for me where I was like, this has to be good because it was something so serious. Uh-huh. So when I felt it didn't reach my standard, I just buried it for uh, years. So it's almost like an aye. homage. Aye, totally. Aye, so aye, that way, aye. as if it wasn't living up to this certain Exactly, man. Say, like, oh, no, this is almost, it's no, 
doing the memory of him. Exactly, Mark exactly, hundred percent. Right, okay, and, okay. and, and it's, I felt like I was undermining the pain. We all that was kind of when that happened. We all kind of grew up and. I was kind of putting an end to the gang fighting, man. It was kind of like this wake up call. Was it for a gang fight, um? Yeah, it was kind of a tangential kind of thing. It was kind of like this random, bad, horrible fucking event. Oh, um, right. But yeah, it was kind of tangentially linked to the gang stuff, man. But um, but it really brought all this together, man. I remember we were all sitting in the field after it, and everybody was just fucking heartbroken. And I remember we seen all the boys from Milton approaching. And everybody was like, are they really going to fucking try and fight with us today when we're grieving? I mean, it was like a day later. And they came up and they just put their armour in one of the boys' brothers. And it was this kind of like, just this moment of maturity where we were like, what the fuck are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and it kind of bonded us almost. It was, so it's interesting. It was, uh, I, but Jason was just it was just an absolute legend. And uh, I still miss him, man. I don't think anybody, I don't think any of us have got over it. It's just, you know, I mean, I know everybody's like, when if somebody dies, they're always the best person ever. But he really fucking was a good mm -hmm. dude, man, and so intelligent, man. Like if he was alive now, man, he'd be making films way right, better okay. than my films, man. Like he was, uh, he had that in him. He like we would talk about. It. I mean, like I know he would have been a great filmmaker, and he was he was younger than me, man. But he was he felt all he felt like he had the leader energy. You know what I mean? He felt older. Um, I think that caused a lot of trauma, and always as a friend group, and I think we all, I. I I think it affected always quite bad. But, right, you know. I see, I see. But it woke us up today, you know what I mean? I think it made you realise, like, fuck this, what the fuck are we doing? This is horrible, this, I mean, it's like, uh, why are we fighting over fucking pieces of land that we were just born into, you know? Ah, <laughs> you kind of woke us up to the reality of the situation. 100%, what aye. Age you? I was 17, he was 16. Ah, uh, so uh, when you're at that age, you think it is everything, all the scheme shit, all the gang fighting? I told it's your whole identity, you know what I mean? And I, even, even though I wasn't a fighter, no, the poster used to call me Ben Sherman, because I was also on Ben Sherman. Ben Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was also on cheap clays. I was also on cheap clays, but I always had good technology. I also did, I missed, missed the... Uh, Modern phone at the ah, time. I know, I know the time, I know the ah, time. Yeah. I director before your time. Ah, yeah. So see after you released uh, that first film, Concrete Flowers, and uh, and it did get a bit of critical acclaim. See, what did that do for you as a director, man? Because as you say, you were self-conscious about it, but now the thing you were most self-conscious about actually turned out really well. Yeah, no, totally, man. It made me feel a lot better, you know what I mean? And I just needed that. I think that's probably all I needed really was just the affirmation for people saying, no, this is actually good. And I was just scared to send it out. And uh, the actor, he fell out of me, man, because it was, I understand. It's like, you know what I mean? He's telling people I've got made this short film that's coming out and then it didn't come out. You know what I mean? So, but, but, but made up since. He actually, he, I made a short film called Boys Night, but my, my night I had with my mum and dad. And uh, he actually helped cast a young boy from it. We got him from his school, so St Andrews in Carlton. Oh, yeah. really? He's a brown drama teacher, really, really talented. Right, brilliant. Great yeah, actor as well, though, man. I mean, I'm definitely going to cast him again and stuff, but he's uh, but he's really, really good at teaching. Ah, good stuff, good stuff. So where did it go for there? Uh, well, I just kept making sure films, but the thing was, in between that time, before the release, that drop off Michael did really well, and that was kind of like seen as my first short film, but I got nominated for to, to, a BAFTA New Talent nomination as a writer, and then the short film got nominated at the proper BAFTAs for best short film, so that was like, I was like, oh my god, this is Greenland. it, I, I thought I was going to be in the Illuminati, I thought, <laughs> I, thought, I, thought I was going to get took through the secret door, you know, and, the uh, glasses of a yeah man, oh the adrenochrome, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm, man yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll I'll take a shot of that right now. <laughs> it, man. I've, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a bash of preface by saying I've got a bad cold and flu, and oh, five five O's been nice enough to take me in now. <laughs> um, uh, I have, I did, man, totally. I thought I'd made it. I thought, oh, thought that was it. I thought it was Jay Z in the film world, and then nothing happened. You know, nobody called. You know, except Brian McCarty. He kept in touch with me, who sadly just passed away. A great actor for uh, Line of Duty. Low Winter Sun, Rob Roy, Ghost in the Darkness with Michael Douglas, brilliant, brilliant actor. Um, I'm gutted we lost him recently, man, just uh, earlier this year. Uh, but he, he was also the villain in Dog Days, which is available on BBC iPlayer. <laughs> Watch Check it out. Uh, uh, but, um, so nobody called, and, but he, people like Brian McCarthy and Zam Slim, who directed it, mean, they kept in touch with me and they kept me kind of going. And then I won a competition, got show scripts that Jerry Myers was judging. We had a great writer called Tony Grissoni and I came first place and then that gave me a wee boost again like right, right okay right. I'm, I'm no terrible at this <laughs> and then uh, and then I realised but I need to make another short film and I made a short film which is 
you know, it's not great, but it's like I, I just had to do it to keep the momentum going. Aye, aye. And then after the two sharpened. Totally, man. And then after that, I got Boys Night commissioned, and um, that was my first funded shot that I directed. Um, I didn't make any money off it, but all, all the money went on screen. But uh, it, it, I'm proud of it. It's one of my most accomplished short films. Would you say so? Aye. I in terms of look and feel and stuff, you know, you can tell it's got money behind it. You know, so it's, it's a night, nice, and it's a bit of a really personal thing. And my dad was alive at that time, so he go, he came at the screen in it, and they loved it. And uh, and there was a character playing a kind of exaggerated version of him. And this, uh, did they know this? Did you tell him? Oh, totally. I oh, know. Did you tell I, him in case he's was, walked in like, oh, that's, that's me. No, <laughs> it was based on a night. I know he was all chuffed because uh, I actually met with Steve McCall about the role. Oh, right. But Steve McCall had a beard that he was doing a play. He said, I remember saying at the time, I looked like fucking Donald Finley. <laughs> his beard. <laughs> and uh, he's had a beard at the time. And I remember thinking, oh, man, I, we don't have enough money to tell Steve McCall to shave his beard <laughs> just for the role. And uh, so I ended up being this great actor, Cameron Jack, who just totally was the spitting image of my dad and mm -hmm. similar tattoos. And uh, he absolutely smashed out the park, man, and it was great. But I'm choking to work with Steve, man. Uh, it was... It's the only time I've had like director integrity and not just been a fanboy, you know what I mean? I actually I went with the right choice. Would you have had to pay a mayor to shave the beard though? I don't know. I just I just I just know we couldn't afford to end I just know it was too small for I to ask somebody, uh, you know. Yeah, I, mean? yeah, I know, but I just say the guy the guy eventually played the part that probably if, he's, if, if, he's, if he's playing a play, you know what I mean, he's he's no, uh, he's, 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 he's getting, getting good money, yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he's a, from that and to come do maybe we'd be shot for him and everything. But he, he I love Steve McCall as an actor, he's one of my favourite Scottish actors. No, no, he's so a great guy. Yeah, 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 he's done yeah, a great yeah, guy, so, man. Yeah, totally, man. Uh, and he was so so lovely, man. He gave us his time and um, I just a really great guy. I remember him saying, look, if you want me to do it, I'll do it. And then that's how he left us and I was like, fuck, man. I was, I was like, <laughs> so the cards were literally on the table. Aye, man, but it just the beard, I was like, it just looks too old to be my dad. I was just, I was obsessed with finding somebody that had a similar vibe to my dad. Steve McCall's got more of a... Like Steve McCall, I think just there's a, there's a danger to him. He's, he's really good at playing a kind of the dark. Like, I love the Rising of the Foot Soldier series, man. It's my guilty pleasure. I think mm -hmm. I think they're superb. I, I, I want to make Rising of the Foot Soldier nine Glasgow. <laughs> that's what's the one of my. See, to be honest, mate, I, I can't see it been after cars, man. No, totally, they, they man. I know. I know. Mar Bay or not, and everywhere. Else. I know. But Steve McCall was in the last one I went to see in the cinema, man. And he, he's great in it, man. Is he in it? He's I, always I, he's I, always I, the best thing. Right? Who and did he play in it? I've not seen it. He plays like a traveller, and uh, he? and he's. Uh, <laughs> shooting people with shotguns and stuff great oh, yeah, yeah. he's got a great death scene actually in the cinema man there was this old man who cried when Steve McCool character died spoilers and uh, <laughs> I, this old man was crying in the cinema man I'm feeling was so bad for him I, it was quite an emotional scene but it's crazy foot soldier you know, I mean how much emotion can it be uh, well, this old guy might have been a traveller <laughs> I totally know I totally maybe I man but it was uh, oh shit it was, uh, was okay, a nice man. thing it was uh, I beat his brown in it and then I love just love him as an actor. Steve McCool, Gary Lewis, I think they're all fantastic. Man. Nah, no, he's a great, a great guy and a great actor. Yeah. See, seeing your time for like directing your first short film uh, to this point, what would you say the biggest thing you learned about being a director was? Um, I mean, I mean, I think my main talent, well, the main thing I learned was like you know, like you can all all you really need to know how to direct is to be a fan of film you need to and have good taste if you have good taste and you know film you can direct because all you what the director's job is to do is to pick the best people for the job so you want the best sound guy you want the best dop camera guy and you want your best editor and then my main thing i learned is just don't get in their way too much i think people can over direct sometimes and then it shows and uh there's some stuff I've seen where it's like, not even Scottish stuff, like just like stuff from down south and that. You can tell the director's been all over it and maybe not let the DOP have their say. Because the, the camera guy, that's their job, that's their, their that's where they shine. Yeah, they're you know, bread and butter, so they know what in and out and uh, they know more than me, so it's like, they know what looks good. So I, I, my main thing I learned was just to trust the folk you hire and let them do their thing and not get in the way too much how was it you, you learned that lesson though what was it, it kind of did you just was that just a kind of an intuition you just kind of picked up like maybe i should I, just I, I picked it up i got just intuition and also I, I think maybe my, some of my first short films i was a bit like on them in terms of like i want to look like this i want to look like that and then i learned like when watched the stuff back the stuff that they were just like suggesting was probably better than what i was thinking right okay you know see so you, you, you learned the hard way 
Aye, uh, because it's that thing as well. I can imagine seeing when you're writing like a short film and as you say, like, like your first short film and probably other ones that they've been attached to stories close to your heart. Totally, so yeah. So it's natural you build up this image in your head and you're like, right, I want it to look 100%, like this. 100%, that's the thing, the film never is. Like, that's, well, that's the main lesson I learned actually, that for, well, mainly from Concrete and Flowers, is do not judge the film by the assembly edit when it's just been put together. Because that's not the film. Like, What's the assembly edit? That's just, just you put all the pieces together. Just all the scenes it? back to back. Just look back to back. But when you watch that, you're like, I'm a fucking, I've made the worst film ever. You know? But then when you start editing it, you just polish it up and it becomes this, it becomes close to what you had in your head. But when you first see that first assembly edit, when especially when probably new filmmakers, you think, I'm, you know, I think a lot of people probably go for this, where you're like, I'm terrible at this and uh, this is not good. But, Aye, so just don't just judge a film until you're deep in the edit. Mm. You, know, you can always pull a shot. Aye, because it's probably good you learned that with your first short film as well. Because it's rather than, I suppose you're going to learn that eventually at some point. No, it's definitely. Early. 100%. Aye, don't, definitely. Definitely. So, what is the craziest thing you've ever dealt with in a film set? Oh. <laughs> some was a lot. <laughs> um, um, how does it? So, um, Boys Night, right? So, Boys Night were filming for five days straight. And the uh, final day we're filming in my, me and my dad's flat. My dad was raising me because he was like a mad fetishist. Didn't want anybody in the flat unless it was clean and all that. And I was just like, let's just get out and let's, let's do it. Um, but for the first four days we had security on set, just, just in case. Because it's handy have somebody just to say to people, no, we're ah, filming. And the and, ah, kind of exactly. Stuff, like, people, set, but, right? Exactly. And it always happens. I mean, and the key is just to be nice to them. But... Um, the, we let the security go home on the last day because I was like, we're filming in Springburn, that's my land. Nothing's going to happen there. I mean, I'm protected by the peg, you know. <laughs> I thought we were going to be fine. Um, and then we're in the flat and there's like 20 people in the flat and the producer's panicking because he's like, this risk of like, we can't have as many people in the flat. And then all of a sudden, everybody was outside in the car park. They all just came into the flat and uh, my pal Kenny was working on it and Kenny came up to me and said, uh, James, there's a man running about the street outside with a machete attacking all the cars. And I was like, just don't let the actors know. <laughs> just don't let anybody know. <laughs> Let's just keep filming and uh, let it deal with itself. And uh, I did do uh, I think the, the guy got apprehended quite quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just walking around topless attacking cars with a machete and that rarely happens in Bogan Hill <laughs> that, that, that's not a common occurrence to be honest I was under the impression it was quite common it was uh, as man but you know it's like monthly and I, mean, I, I usually they've got a tap on though. 100% I mean, usually, usually they're conscious of the weather and that kind of thing so the tap laughs are a bit man. crazy there's a few dog days I had a lot of ones as well my dog days we got people in high rises throwing bottles at us um my dog days a lot went wrong man. I will uh, tell us about dog days I'm curious to hear about that because usually yeah. We, we're talking off camera about how a lot of BBC Scotland they don't want to like, film in like, Glasgow and that kind of stuff they want to kind of outsource so yep. was that your kind of first feature that was based like, outside of Glasgow totally I so totally. tell us about the process of that like writing the script and that so I made a short film first um, called Gimme Shelter I've never really released it um, I, I want to release it actually because it's, it's kind of cl close to the the pilot of Dog Days the first 10 minutes um, and it was a proof of concept so I made this short film no money, just I was going for it, and uh, and then we gave it to the BBC as a pitch, and they picked up. But they they they, they feel there's too much stuff being set in Glasgow and Edinburgh, which I don't know if I agree with, but they, they, they just felt that way. And uh, they asked me to set it elsewhere, so I started looking at places. I went to Ayrshire, I went to Kilmarnock, went everywhere, and um, I went all over Scotland. And when I landed in Dundee, it just had a, a Glasgow edge to it that did similar. The people were. You know they had the same amount, the same type of crazy having Glasgow. So I was like, this is this works. And uh, also, and a lot of dog days was about the kind of the fake diazepam problem that's going around where people are taking ill, and uh, that was really prominent in Dundee. One of the mm. actors actually is Shannon Allen, uh, who's an angel, and the, she plays Laura in Dog Days. She's an absolute star. She's probably the heart to me. She's the heart of the whole piece. Um, but she had a friend pass away from Fake Valley, so it was yeah, very was close she to her Dundee? heart. Yeah, she's from Dundee, yeah, okay, okay. So it was really close to her heart as well, and uh, it seemed it was a prominent problem up there, so I just felt that was the best place to say it. But uh, it was my first time outside of Glasgow, so it was hard writing scripts, cause I didn't, uh, I tried my best to write the odd bit of like, Dundee thing, me. but I basically just put on the front page of each script, do not follow the dialogue, say this how you'd say it in real life, 
and uh, the actors did amazing with it, yeah. Right, okay, so yeah. what was the script based on? Yeah, it was a lot, was it, plus it's kind of like, it's an amalgamation of me and my brother, I think, so it's like, it's kind of about being an artist and, be, and being working class and the uh, self-sabotage kind of nature sometimes comes with that and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you kind of look for ways to fuck things up for yourself sometimes, I think, if you're from, you feel like you don't deserve it, so you'll kind of, you will, I mean, I mean, I've always said that I've, I've, got, I've got, gotten over it now, but I used to have this energy where it was kind of like, I'll reject you before you reject me. So I really wanted to explore that a little bit. And uh, a lot of it was based on my older brother, who he, he'd, he'd taken fake Valium one day after, not long after my father died and had a bad seizure. And my brother's totally, totally clean now, but it, it, was, um, it was just quite a traumatic thing. It, 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 I remember he woke up and he gave the wrong address. <laughs> and to give an address for ten years ago, it was, uh, but it was, it was really, it was, it was kind of like a, a really bad seizure. So that oh, a lot of that ended up in dog days, and then there's a little lot. The character really is fifty fifty. Me and my brother, it's like a, a stuck well, together. Yeah. Yeah. I think somebody, one of my friends, said to me that finally I've kind of found a way to not make it too personal because I feel like some of my stuff in the past, the like boys night and stuff, I was kind of like it has to be exactly how it was the actual night when. I mean, it needs to be a film, it doesn't have to be, I mean, exactly what happened in real uh -huh. life, you know, I mean, even Concrete and Flowers, I was like, you know, like obsessing over these little things, like I needed, wanted to set up sky lanterns and I was like so angry we couldn't do it and all that, and so it was like, uh, I've kind of got this weird thing where I, you know, I take, I've been alchemising my trauma into uh, short films. Uh, that way time, when you're right? writing a piece, yeah. uh, see when you're writing, right, see, do you write it for anybody in particular, do you write it with the mind of an audience watching it or do you write it for you? I think you need to write it for you first. I've got, I've tried to get into that Rick Rubin way of thinking where it's like uh, audience comes last. Mm -hmm. It's hard for a while. I was all for the, I mean, there's a part of you that you have to play the game a little bit where you're like, what are these, what's, what's kind of, you know, what's, what's what will help it get made? So you do have a bit of that cynical mindset, but I always do write it for me first. Like, like what, what do I want to see? You know, mm -hmm. that's so always, uh, mm -hmm. nah, cause that's, I find, cause I was, because I did a kind of different type of writing, see real like music and kind of stuff like that. And just any type of creative, creative stuff. Content, yeah, totally creative stuff. It's like I was, uh, crossover. Writing, when you start, you're writing for yourself because you've never done it before, so you don't yeah. really think of showing anybody. And that's probably where you're at your best because it flows and then you start letting people see it or hear it and then you start thinking about, right, I want to write this so they can hear it. 100%. And then that's when it takes a nosedive and then you suddenly need to pull yourself back for it. That's the experience I had with it. Totally, yeah. And that Rick Rubin thing, I, I'm the creative act and all that, I've listened to it. I'm a religious yeah, follower yeah, of his yeah, work because he's same. bang on in what he says because it's so true, man. Like, it's it's so true, all that anxiety 100%. and all that Definitely. over obsessing and all that shit away from the actual process because you realise the process is like the most fun part of it exactly man my best I feel like my best stuff I've made or the stuff I've made that's close to what I want to do tonally is a short film I made called Spiral with Conor McCann from Dog Days and the music video I made for Michael P. Rowley those two things are the I think they're close to what I, the kind of stuff I want to make the most how so? I just I, 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 I want to take kind of big concepts you know I want to I like that and like like high concept genres and ground them in a kind of Glaswegian reality. And I mean, like so it's like I want to make like crime stuff, but ground it in a world that we recognise. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And uh, or like, like Spyro's got a kind of sci-fi horror element to it, but it's in a very working class world to set. You know what I mean? So it's kind of you know I just taking those two different worlds and kind of mashing them together uh -huh. yeah. do you think is that <clears throat> see the fact the reason why you want to do that is that for you or do you, is that more for the people of Glasgow to relate to I think it's for me because I feel like I've, I've been a little bit of pigeonholed but I feel like I've, I've done enough as the depressing short film guy you know the depressing Glaswegian stories you know what I mean and I've, I've, I'm running out of trauma to mind so it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, so it's like I feel like I want to do stuff that's kind of um, that's got an entertainment slant to it, you know what I mean? It's, um, I, uh, but still, we're in a world where we we recognise, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I just feel like it's not been done. I just feel like Glasgow's no, it's no look to like so orphans. I think did it masterfully, but I feel like it's a great looking city, and it's not looked the way it should on film yet. Uh, like, I, the I way they it. make London look and shows is fucking fantastic now, mm -hmm. and I think we can we can match that. Definitely, definitely, yeah. and it's like. <clears throat> If you look at a lot of things, creative projects in London, it's all London based, London yeah, this, London yeah. that, and it's like 
London seems to be the focal media point of the UK, which is great, but there's opportunity to do that in Glasgow. People from Glasgow don't always need to fucking travel to London just to fucking, if they want to act or direct something, there should be a lot more focus in the creative industries up here. And I don't know if it's just it's like a lack of funding or I just... Because there's no lack of talent. Well, that's, that's, a, that's the thing, 100%. That's totally as a lack of funding. There's, there's, there's no 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 funding. And uh, and I don't think it's anybody's fault. I mean, other than, the, you know, the, the, pe- the people that you never hear outside this going that maybe don't give us the funding you know what I mean so but it's there's definitely 100% a lack of funding and uh, I because you're right man I think well we've got so much talent that gets lost because people give up you know what I mean because they're like Mm. they feel like it's not going to happen especially in acting I feel like the actors have got the hardest I think aye aye definitely because you go through that feast nap famine mindset plus it's the fact we're we're hard to be understood and when you're going up again see if I'm going down to London (coughs) for an an audition Immediately, I'm having to totally change how I speak and how to be understood. I know. And immediately, you're playing at a handicap, I think. 100%. And no, that way, and it's, I say that in the sense where you're playing at a handicap against somebody else's expectations, against somebody else's standards. But I totally. think uh, I'm quite passionate about this. See, we were dialect our culture on that it's fucking so unique it should be celebrated 100% but we've man. got this national I, I think I don't know what the rest of the world's like but I've got this feeling Scotland's got this national self-loathing it holds, and, and it, totally and it's a form of trauma I yep. think it's like just that we've been brought up it's that train spotting loves train spotting see right. that line it's shite being Scottish I hate it I understand what uh, I've been exactly. with doing with it but I just no, I agree with you on that. Aye. Like hundred percent, man. I think that there is we're, we're we're really down on ourselves. We don't see the potential that we have. Yeah. And uh, and I, I like I yeah I'm fucking totally passionate about keeping the dialect in my films like realistic as possible. And it might hurt it. Some of them may not travel as well. You know what I mean? The, the film festival wise, but. I don't care, you know what I mean? I'm quite, like, like I, I want my stuff to have subtitles. Yeah, I put I subtitles mean, uh, on it, media cunts, no, exactly, I mean, we're, I talking about, we're talking about Ireland earlier. I've watched some Irish shit and I'm like, what the fuck are they saying? I know, totally, Still I know. Still made on Netflix. I know. So there, there is a room there for it. It's like, I, I don't buy this thing, oh, oh no. Don't get me wrong, it'll maybe no go nationwide initially, but there's yep. still, uh, nationwide, sorry, like globally, but 100%. I still think there's opportunity for it. It's just, if you tell yourself it's not going to work, you're right. No, totally. I mean, I, I, I was blessed. I go on a lot of BBC writer programmes down London and uh, it was before COVID and they would, they would, I would have to go down there and stay for a while and put me up in a hotel and stuff. And it was brilliant. But there was a brilliant woman that worked for the BBC writers down called Anne Edivine and I had a script that was, for, the script that got me on the programme was totally Glaswegian, like painfully Glaswegian. Like even I would read it and I was like, Ugh. you know what I mean? And I remember saying to her, like, should I tone that down? And she's like, no, that's what makes you special. She, and she's like, don't ever dilute that. And she, that always stuck with me, her saying that. So, Anne, if you're out there, man, you're an angel. And, um, Shout out, Anne. Hi, man. And, and, Anne's a man. Yeah, she had a... Other woman. She had a good mindset on it. And uh, that convinced me, like, I was doing the right path. Like, don't... I don't compromise that. And that's the thing as well. See what I say? Well, use fucking any type of art. With art, the goal... It's to stand out. Totally. See, being Scottish, we're so niche, we're so small, yep, we're yep, so unique. unique. We immediately yeah. stand out with it. Totally, trying. that's the thing, so man. Yep. We should, why are we, why we, it doesn't make sense why we've only had, to, like, train spotting is a cultural phenomenon. You know what I mean, a lot of it was filmed in post, I know it's the end of a film, but a lot of it was filmed in Glasgow, so got Peter Mullen in it, and uh, travelled everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, just people in America love it, you know what I mean? And I don't understand why that's only happened once. Mm-hmm. Why nobody's ever matched that with cinematically. I think John Hodges, the screenwriter, uh, to adapt to the book, I don't think he gets enough credit because Chainsaw book's amazing, but it's it's uh, it's a kind of like a bunch of short stories almost. And Aye. John Hodges did an amazing job taking that and turning into this like, masterful story. Like, uh, I did a really good job. And uh, I just don't understand why that's only happened once. Why we've only had one big phenomenal cultural phenomenal film, film you know I feel like there's definitely that should have happened more than once and that, and that, maybe it's due now you know what I mean maybe it's maybe you know, could well, be def- well, yeah. what's your opinion on see nowadays try to get a film out into the mainstream compared to back like in the 90s or the 2000s like alright so you've got Netflix you've got Amazon Prime totally. that kind of thing I mean I definitely there's more ways to get out there now man 100% and that's his dream to get it on like, one of the streamers but I, I, there is a thing with the Scottish films where they they do, they do think too small, even when making the film. I think the everything's quite 
Do my directors or screenwriters? Ah, about? the right. screenwriters. I think, I think they, do, they think small when they don't think and they're like, aiming high, aiming to be that, uh, a standard that reaches. Oh, so they maybe look at like, right, this is Scottish, so I'll probably be able to get this amount of budget, so I'll need to just contain totally, it within idea. this small world. But if they just fucking expand it as much as they can, then exactly, man. Shoot for the stars. Shoot for the stars, man. Too, uh, that was uh, that was me and the DOP, uh, dog days. Gavin Hopkins is amazing. Got a great eye, man, and uh, just a stunning uh, filmmaker and cameraman in his own right. But um, when we were making dog this, we were like, like, let's, if we're going to fail, because we knew we didn't have much money, we knew we were kind of underfunded a little bit, so we are kind of like, if we're going to fail, let's feel big, let's shoot for the fuck, let's, let's, let's aim as high as possible, and if it's going to be bad, let's make it really fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, and thankfully, see, people seem to be responding well to it. So it's, I know, that's, that's, that's the attitude to adopt, and, and any more to come life, like, ah, fuck it, if I'm totally. going to fail, I'm going for it, know what I mean? Totally. But, uh, see, you mentioned there as well. Can I just want to so you directed a music video for Michael Imperioli? Yeah. So tell me the story of how that came about. Yeah, man, that may have saved my life. That was like a, so my, my dad passed us. I lived with my dad up in Bulgar Hill and um he had a stroke in early twenty twenty in April and um he passed away and uh, I was kinda of messed up with it and I was watching the Talking Sopranos podcast a lot and I just had this instinct. It was really strange. Um, I was like, I was, I, mean, I was listening to it. He just released the Zopa album and it was, the songs were just, they had this real Lou Reed, Velvet Underground feel to them and there, were, there was a lot of melancholy in it and like, I just really, it really kind of helped me get through my grief. So I just dropped him a message and it was just a simple message like, here, if you ever need a music video, this is some of the stuff I've made, I would love to do it. And I remember my ma picked me up after it and we went to Tim Hortons and Bishop Briggs for a coffee. And I was just sitting in the car park and I got a message back and he says, here man, uh, if we ever get a budget to make a music video, I'll, I'll give you a shout. And I just said, fuck a budget, fuck a budget. That's what I said, I said fuck a budget, just let me do something if you were free. And then... Uh, he sent me. I said, "Which song would you like?" And he sent me the song, and the, I fell in love with the song instantly. And, um, aye, and then he gave me totally. He totally had that Rick Rubin thing where he did not give me. He didn't want to even want to tell me what the song was about because he didn't want to influence it. Right. So he gave me total freedom to. And I'm in the picture I wrote him was based on a. It was about this guy that kind of broke up with his girlfriend and it was this heartbreaking pitch and this this must be what he showed the band members, Elijah and Omar, they were great guys and uh, I think they were expecting that but I just on a weird psychotic tangent went away and made like a little Bonnie and Clyde fucking crime movie that was the, for the song when the, and um I, 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 and, the, and the whole opening scene is like, you know, this really... Talking about calling people chuckters and it's like this real weird long cold open was really self indulgent and uh, he totally loved it man he fell in love with it and uh, it was just amazing I just had such a beautiful experience and, and I, I was in a really dark place too I don't know but maybe if he picked up on that or I don't know what it was man but I think I think they expect the message to go through to him you know when you message celebrities it's like you just you know, you're in a list of fucking thousands of people. Ah, you mad so, fucking Insta models. I'd love to pump you. You know, so, that's, that's <laughs> mine. <'cause, laughs> I've not done any place for that. Oh, here's a picture of my dick. Let's size it. I can't do it. I know. Unless you want me to send, man. <laughs> that is what happened with Michael and Pedro. You know, I'm <laughs> uh, I sent my dick pic and they loved it. No, but I'm just, uh, I think I totally had a Rick Rubin film, man, and gave him total freedom. And I think it was the freedom that gave me that confidence to change the pitch and make something that was totally different. And uh, it was during COVID, man, so it was really hard. It fell apart a few times and I had to recast people because people uh, that's sick family members and were worried about it and stuff. So it, it became this... Yeah, it's one of my favourite things I've ever made. And Brian McCarthy was in it, who just passed away, man. He he, 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 he drove down from... He was living in Dundee. He drove down to Glasgow, filmed the whole day with us was amazing with my pal Mark, he totally took him under his wing and two of them had made magic together. It's not in the video, but they improvised this whole argument scene and stuff and he, he totally, like, just, he just gave this non-actor a lot of time and, and, I, and then he wouldn't even take petrol money off me. I don't know. Driving around Dundee, man, just such an angel and they really supported me. But then, I, I, it's one of my favourite things I made, so Zopa Diamonds Into Dust, it's on YouTube, check it out, man, if you, and if you like it, 
we comment on it. <laughs> uh, leave a comment and a like and a share. Uh, See, uh, writing for a music video, did that alter your style of writing? Nah, I, 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 no, I wrote it like a short film. I, told right, it, okay. I, I, wrote, I wrote it like a short film, but it did alter it because it was like no dialogue. So, I mean, the, the, the thing that became the cold open in the edit was literally there was a one scene where it says, I used the names from uh, Badlands, I think it was Kit and Harry buy drugs from Cookie. And I played Cookie, and uh, but it became this really tense, uh, horrific kind of scene that, that, that pays off later in the music video. But um, yeah, it was I, so just uh, I, wrote, I just wrote kind of like images almost, and but I'd, I did treat it like a script, but I didn't write any dialogue, and but I recorded it like dialogue, and I let the actors so everything looked quite real and quite like like it was a movie, and it's kind of so it's kind of probably one of the most ambitious things I did. And we will, and the DOP was a great camera guy called Alan McLaughlin, and it, all he had was a tiny camera. We didn't even have a monitor; I couldn't even see what it looked like until after we shot it. And, oh, uh, really? Aye. And I, and I think it's one of the most better looking things I've made so it's, it's, it's turned out kind of masterful I think as well see if we start to finish as you say it was just pure ambitious for the start just send a random insta message and then what are you 100% and, the, and that thing too man I didn't I was so hard not to like fanboy out and be like I'm obsessed with the Sopranos I love this I love this I love the, I love the episodes you wrote and I, 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 I just want I think he may have respected the fact that I didn't do that, and I came at him like I love your music, you know. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. I, and then Summer of Sam was one of my favourite films, and he he wrote that. And I think he was many acting it, but I think the Sopranos took him away from it. But ah, uh, uh, he's just such a nice guy, man. It was just such, it was so beautiful what he did for me, and um, <clears throat> I think it. Um, yeah, man. I don't know if uh, I was in a really dark place that year. I mean, losing my dad was my best pal, man. Like he was more a best pal than a dad, and. Uh, Losing him was really traumatic, and that made it save my life. You know, it was just mm. really beautiful gift that he gave me. You know, it's quite interesting because even you talk about like, a lot of the stuff you wrote and directed, a lot of it comes from the place of what like, being therapeutic to the point it's helping you through like, loss, like pain, grieving, and all that. I uh, totally, my yeah, hundred percent. That's what I mean. It is. I mean, that's what Paul Prader's one of my favorite writers, and that's what he says. It's like, like writing taxi driver, which is totally self therapy. And it is, it's cheaper than therapy, you know, <laughs> just writing all your, you're just getting all your demons out on the page. Mm -hmm. And you can exaggerate them and you can, you know, you, and you end up, you, you learn about yourself and I mean, things you don't realise. I mean, the, the, there's, there's things when I've made something, when I eventually, when I see it, I was like, oh, that's what I was going through, that's what I was trying to say. You know, I mean, I don't know what I'm trying to say with a project a lot until I'm, I've made it. And then I realise, right. I realise, oh, like, that's what I was, like, you know, try to work through so is it strange when you actually think about it because a lot of times even we're going through some kind of trauma or some kind of like loss or grieving or some any form of suffering it's hard for us to process it because it's so internal but do you feel like going through that process of writing it filming it directing it putting it together and it almost acts as a mirror where you can watch it back and go ah, ah this is what I've been going totally. through totally that's the best way that's, that's actually that's the best way to articulate it that's mm -hmm. really great man I've never even thought about it that's actually really bad it's almost as if it helps you understand it that's exactly what it is man I used to like, yeah totally totally it does and um, I think that's what hurts when you're not making anything or you know things are kind of slow down because you're you know you need that almost that mm. self therapy you know what I mean? Ah. The NHS waiting list is too long. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. man. Yeah. So, see, what was what did you learn? See, for Michael and Pierrot and and like, um, a creative respect, did you pick up any tips for him or any? I almost like yeah, man. The thing was like it's like just the freedom he gave me. I was like, right, if, if I'm ever acting in anything or if I ever help me out in any... Like I, I like to help people when the younger people are making their first short films. Um, it's just to let them do their thing, man. Let them, like, you know, it's, it's their vision, it's their thing, let them do their thing. And uh, I just don't think... And also the main thing I learned is, you know, like, if I ever do get to a certain point of success, I mean, I'm not there yet, but, like, because, you know, the most valuable thing you can keep you for is your time. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, like... He really died. That, that, that's it, man. It's an absolute angel. Nah, it's, it's about always giving back, in it, man? Totally, man. And that's what I want to do eventually. I mean, if I'm not there yet, but if, if once I reach a, reach a certain point, I'd, I want to, you know, run workshops in working class areas and mm -hmm. show young people that filmmaking is attainable. Look at me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a total bam. You know what I mean, if I can do it, you just can do uh, it. You know what uh -huh. I mean? It's like, you know what I mean? So it's, I just want to make it feel attainable and not feel like something that's for. 
you know, it's for people from better backgrounds or it's for people in America, you know what I mean? It's something that we can do and we can do it fucking really well because mm -hmm. everybody here's got great fucking stories, man. You know, it's like... That's exactly right. Like, and it's yeah. so underrepresented, in my opinion, because you realise the power of relatability. Let's like, see our stories. That's why our uniqueness is so important and we don't realise it. It's not, I'm going to be unique. You be totally. yourself because yourself is unique. And how often do we get a film? You know what I mean? Like, it's not even once a year. When's the last one we go? I don't I know. Obviously, you know a lot more than me because you probably watch a lot of me a lot more independent. I mean, there's some, there's, there's a great Scottish film called Girl, and I mean, there's some good ones, but there's like, you know, and they, they, they seem to always kind of go under the radar and they're hard to find and stuff, you know, so it's like, I we don't get that many. I mean, it's almost like once every four years we get a film. I mean, I mean I'm trying mm -hmm. to think. I'm trying to think myself what the last one was. It was like, yes, it's uh, not very common. I mean, it's it? Ken Loach really probably. Man, maybe with like Angel Share would probably be maybe one of the last prominent ones. Well, the Angel Share that came out when I was in Pullman, <laughs> so that was 2012. Ah, I right. remember Paul Brannigan came in. They actually done like a wee feature where they put it on because he'd been in the jail force, so they made like a wee day up where we watched the film and then he walked in, aye. just done a lot of talk kind of thing. Hundred like, percent. I think he'd done like five years for a gun. I had a similar thing, but it wasn't in jail. <laughs> he went and gave a talk. To what me was that? In 2013, he came in and gave a talk to me, but it wasn't. It was outside the jail. <laughs> but was it for the angel share? Aye, 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 totally, aye, okay, aye, okay, aye, okay, okay, okay. And under the skin, he was doing that film with Scarlett Johansson, which is that's a. Really? Is that the one she was pulling up to people in Port Lesgar? Kidding on she was an alien. Aye, aye. aye so he did in fact because he didn't like sex scene, didn't he? Aye, he got his, got his penis out, man. Aye, I <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> the proper went went for it with that film. It's great film. The director's amazing, that Jonathan Glazer. But um, aye, but the, that to me that feels like a oh, set in Scotland. It feels like a, a, a I think of it as like an American movie because it's quite. Uh, it doesn't feel as if it was no. written by a Scottish person. Eh? Aye, you get some it. of these things. It's like. You can see what they're trying to do, see what you're talking about that way, about being, they're trying to make it appeal to a wider audience, so the accent is Scottish, it's set in Scotland, but it's as if it's not wrote by a Scottish person, or if it's wrote by a Scottish person, it's not wrote for a Scottish audience. Exactly, exactly, 100%. Because I think yeah. that's what people think they're going to... They're aiming for a bigger audience, and I think there's something admirable about that as well, but like, I think that's a good thing sometimes, not aiming for a bigger audience and trying, but it's... Aye, it's interesting. It's interesting. But I mean, I'm, I'm, you've really got me thinking, like, what was the last... I mean, I don't want to say it was Ned's. You know what I mean? Like, that was so long ago. I mean, that was 2008, 2010. Oh, that was years ago. Because Ned's was set... I'm faker, Donald, you know what I mean? Aye. So, like, the, it was set in my school and all that. A school I went to. So, that was... I think I was in the jail and all. <laughs> I was in the jail and fucking all these films came out, bastards. But... Uh, I remember when it came out because it was many a bigger thing for me because it was like, where I was like, grew up and that kind of totally, thing. Totally, I hundred percent Cardi. I mean, yeah, I, I, I it was filmed in Clyde Bank too, so it was that way. It was it was made to look as if it was all Cardano, but it was actually based in Cardano. I definitely. So it was like kind of that was like a mad thing like ah oh, fucking hell because Cardano does not like what you get Springburn, Govan, Pulse. They're all notorious. Like I definitely. They, they're yeah. synonymous with Glasgow, especially gang culture. Cardano, not really much. Maybe aye, like yeah, if you're fair there, but you're not really fucking that. They want to like the standout fucking gangs. Like no, that. it's interesting. I know because then when you're in Springburn, you're, you're kind of in a bubble. You don't even think of the south side. I mean, you're, like, you're in this wee. You, you don't even think of like, a two mile radius. That I mean, for uh, all that. I mean, Springburn's like, yeah. a big place. My granny stayed in Springburn is, for years. Well. Carbis Dale Street. Oh, no, you're right. Uh, my granny you know, stayed there for years. Yeah, I actually yeah. went up there recently. She stayed there. That was one of the ones that my granny stayed there for what I was born to. Uh, till like, I was like fucking twelve or something and moved to Royston. But. Uh, I remember going up recently and that way I see going up I was driving by I was going through Springburn to go and get t-shirts off somebody Aye. and uh, I seen that I'm going to go and dive up there and look and that way back when you remember it and then you see it's all done up it's all modernised and you're like I know, I just, it's, it's no it's just it's like stale it's, it's just no it's hard I definitely I see my group on Rye Hill Road in Bollock and it's uh, they don't do the tenements I was in and it's just these wee new build buildings and it's just, you know, it just doesn't feel like the same place. It's nah, interesting. It's, it's, fuck, uh, it's close as hot. Don't get me wrong, it is nice. It's like you've oh, been nice on the houses, but it's just, I, I think... I wonder if I, that's probably... I it's think a nostalgia, that's a, a personal nostalgia factor. That's I think, exactly I, right. I, it's I, a totally personal thing. It's we're selfish bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we, know, we went, but, away, went it back the way it was. Uh, 100%. So what's yeah. the biggest lesson you've learned in your career? I don't know, good question. Um, biggest lesson, man... I think similar to what I said earlier on, man, just don't get in people's way, man, and let people have freedom to, you know, experiment and do things outside the box. And mm -hmm. and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm still learning this lesson, but it's like to not think too small, you know what I mean? Like, like I, in my head, I'm always just making things for, like, people in Springburn to see. Like, I don't I don't even... I'm always shocked when people message me and they've, they've watched my stuff. Or, like, it's always such a, a wee boost. Like, oh, I'm cool, man. Like, people are actually mm -hmm. seeing this stuff because I'm kind of making it for a... Uh, myself and a really small audience, uh -huh. and uh, so it's, it's trying not to think too small and 
Han tager AM higher. Han fik nærmest på min fik nærmest på AM på begge rådigt. Så for hvad han var kigge gerne, når det var det var jam interpreten as make the idea as big as possible, yep. but make the audience as small as possible in the sense that you be the audience. You totally. But then make the idea 100%. the world. I think that's that's a brilliant, yeah, uh, brilliant recipe for it. Hundred percent. I think that makes sense a lot. I think that is what I'm thinking, man. I totally. And the and that is man that regular been things true. It's like you just have to. You just have to trust your instincts, you know. I think if you like, if you've got good taste and you like, you like films, if you love films, it's hard to mess up because you know the formulas. You know what you know what makes you tingle. You know you know what makes you get a goosebump feeling when you watch a film. It's just you just you just kind of want to create that for other people. Mm-hmm. Definitely, people, man. Yeah. So see, when you spoke about writing your first script, you'd go a copy of like the, or you'd learn to write your first script through watching Pulp Fiction with a copy of the script, then you wrote your first script. How much has your process changed for writing your first script to nowadays? Um, I well, I've learned a lot more. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. I mean, no, no much to be honest. You know, I'm, I could probably. I mean, I, I I think more about what works and formulas and like and like emulating things that I like and how you you know like. I think films usually follow certain kind of journeys and like I've kind of learned to try and replicate them and kind of hey, whereas in the beginning it was quite wordy I was writing a lot and you know it was like a lot dead control and all that, that. I, just trying I, to like I, fucking totally. control it but then that way just letting it flow 100% like, it it I, that's the secret I think man just not getting in the way and like letting I just letting the thing write itself almost mm-hmm. like I would just walk around like I, I, if I like I load up like I basically I'm not a guy, I, I sit and I jot and fucking nonsensical stuff in notepads, but I'd usually walk around, probably look like a psychopath, talking to myself in my head as the characters. And I don't write it until I've cracked it in my head. And when I've cracked it in my head, I'm like, right, it's ready to go. And then there's a pause out and I can write it. I can write this, I wrote a 120 page script in three days. Like, really? Just, I just non stop writing and uh, cause I just built up so much. That was just ready to go. Right, so yeah. see, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, what, what comes first in the process? Do you need to get your story together, then write a script after the back of it, or does it come simultaneously? I think I, I, I need to, I need to know. Like, I'm I'm weird. So I, I need to know the title, <laughs> or I need, it doesn't even have to be the final title, but I need to give, give it a name, give man. A I, I need to like write that title page. Then that's my first thing I do. And I sit and look at that fucking page for four days on end before I've cracked the title and then I I, I need to know where it ends right. I need to know how the story ends and uh, once I know that and that ending can change but I need to know how it ends to write it and as soon as I know how it ends I, I just write it and get it get it to that journey get right it, so you just need the title on the ending title on the ending and I'm ready to go really? but it takes a long time to get that man. ah uh, no of course of uh, course it's a journey it's a journey indeed man so see if it was any like people that maybe writing a script or developing a script for the first time, what kind of tips would you give them in order to kind of get through the process? Don't be too self-conscious, man. Don't be hard on yourself. And, um, you know, like, I, my early scripts are terrible, you know what I mean? And, but there, there was something in them that people saw that there was a the seed or something, you know what I mean? So it's like, just don't... Don't be scared to send stuff, man. Like, just send it out. Just get it out, get eyes on it. And, um, I, and, and think about what you can achieve... Maybe with yourselves, like with a small group of people, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I just think what you can maybe do yourself and what, what's achievable and no budget. I mean, that was, that was part of my secret, I think, because like, I knew what I could do with no money. And I still think that way. I mean, I think that's probably what keeps me hungry. Is like, I'm like, if nobody's going to fund this, like, I can do this myself with a bunch of pals and camera people I've met and, you know, and uh-huh. make, make something that's interesting you know what I mean it might not be perfect maybe rough around the edges but I'm still ready to make a no budget feature if nobody's going to give me money to make one you know so, so I still think that way because uh, that's a trap you can find yourself in because as you say you can go to like when you go into that world and then you land back in reality you can yeah. get caught up in that all right I'm I'm making features that are I'm getting paid half a million to make and that so that's yeah. the, the, the benchmark I set myself so I'm not doing low budget stuff and then uh, well, I, hope that happens, I hope it happens one day man <laughs> I mean I've heard that man that's the thing it's like, so I've heard people on podcasts like the American filmmakers talk about how much they get made to get write a script and I'm like does that how much you can get eventually you know what I mean so that, that keeps me I think that keeps me going you know what I mean is there a lot of money in it? 
I mean, I think eventually. I mean, not right now. Yeah, I mean, right I'm now. no, 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 no. I'm toothless and staying with my ma. <laughs> Just got evicted from my flat and I'm staying with my ma. So it's like it's not a uh, right now. It's no. I mean, but I mean, it's not nothing, but it's like you know, it's like it just, sounds like good inspiration in my opinion. Totally, man. It keeps you hungry. I, I, keep, I keep you hungry. It's like, I know I'm cl- I'm close to where I want to be. Mm. You know, what I mean, if it takes it. That's the thing. It's just don't give up. That's the main thing. A piece of advice I'd give young people: persevere, don't give up, endure the journey. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, what I mean, it's going to be a while. You know what I mean, you might take you making three bad shortfalls before you make a good one, but just. Don't ever give up, man. Just persevere, keep going. I mean, it's, it's, think it is a ten-year plan, and that's what's the basic. Ah, uh, that there's one quote that always stuck with me, and, and it's I always go back to it's uh, an overnight success occurred after ten years of hard work. Hundred percent. That's thing. When people think I just look, like, you know, made dog days and like just but it was like that happened after twelve years of doing stuff for free. You know, uh, what I mean, cut like, your uh, teeth, and it's that yeah. thing. It's what goes back to it. as much as I ask, is there money in it and that kind of thing. For me, and I'd imagine it's the same for you. It's as much as it's good to get paid and get money for what you love doing. It's no the it's no the deciding factor between whether you do it or not. No, totally, man. I mean, that's the thing. I would make. I would, still, I would still make a shot with no money. But the main thing is for me is I don't need any money. Like uh, that's my main uh, superpower. Is I can live at zero. I've got a good man. <laughs> I can actually shoot the taps me, so I can I can live Go at more. zero. I so I. But if you can live at zero, my main thing is. My people get being paid. The camera guy getting paid for his time. The sound guy getting paid for his time. Because that that's hard work. You know, I mean, that's like labour. Like there, it's a lot of heavy lifting. A lot of. I mean, it's a hard job. The camera guys and the crew and we've all got. So, if I make something, I just like to make sure they all get paid. And it's like you know, and because that makes it. That's that's where the quality comes. Just putting the money on screen, you know. And for me, that's totally man. It's like I don't care about making money. I mean, I never go on it to make money. I go on it to make art and. And it's getting permission to make art is the main thing, you know what I mean? It's getting permission, getting something funded or commissioned is, you know, you just need, to, that permission is what keeps me going, you know what I mean? I'm still So how do you feel you, like you, you endure that process eh, where like, you're not creating, you're waiting? You're I waiting to create, where I'm at, permission to create, it that, sounds like a fucking crazy thing. I'm that is that, 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 that's what I'm at right now, you know what I mean? And, um, it's, and I've been so close to pulling the trigger and making a no-budget feature that I've, got, that I've got that works, but I know it would be so much better if I had money behind it. So I'm kind of trying to get it going, you know, with, 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 with a budget behind it, but it's uh, it's hard. It's, it's hard. Cause I'm, that's kind of what I'm at right now, man. Yeah, probably just, the hardest I, part of the hardest part, I, you're Just your development stuff, you know. I've got a lot of stuff in development. With, uh, with quite big companies, you know what I mean? So I've got a lot of stuff in development, but it's... Um, it takes like five years to get something made, you know. It's five years of writing before the green light something. Really, aye? I'm as from that's 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 the standard. It's like for a big show, it's like uh, it takes from about five years to get to. Was that a lot of going through the editing and that kind of gone, stuff? Gone through the writing it, just going through the like uh, editing the script. Why does it take so long to do it? I don't know. I really don't know. I think I think it's I think it's a standard everywhere, or even in England. I think it's the standard. But then there's you know the shortcuts like dog days if you're willing to make something maybe a bit low budget like that moved fast you know what I mean that went from making a short film to making dog days within like three years maybe so it's like a so that's considered quick Is, uh, are you talking about the full process of the idea to completion yeah, or just I, writing it idea to uh, co- completion but I mean for the five year thing is from idea to starting filming Really? Uh, I mean, that's for like the big shows. Is that yeah. just because of all the kind of green lights and the, the fucking the stuff that's kind of in between the kind it, of the it, legal it, stuff? Totally nah, and, and, and writing it, you end up, you know, you, you, you're kind of, you pitch an idea and then, you know, everybody's kind of got a say in it, the producer, so it's like you kind of get a lot of notes on it. A lot of turning and, and throwing. Uh, a lot of going back and forth. And then the weird thing is, you go through this thing of writing this and it changes and it transforms and then it ends up going right back to what you fucking pitched in the beginning <laughs> <laughs> and then, then you're just through this whole crazy process. you know, cunts are flinging in magic coins and all that. Ah, exactly, <laughs> aye, I know, I know. Yeah, so we, will, we will not discuss Joy Town. <laughs> <laughs> so you can ask a question and write and feel free not to answer this because I don't want you to burn any bridges. Not at totally. See, we have places like, well, we'll just use the BBC as a, as an example. Yeah. Do you find, see when you go in with a lot of gritty stuff, especially based in Glasgow, do you find there's a lot of kind of Editing to the point where they want to remove a lot of the kind of grittiness. They, 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 I mean, they've, they, so they've, they've got a certain audience that they need to think about, you know what I mean? So, a lot of the, the notes I get back sometimes is 
like our, our audience won't get this and somebody makes you think well he's kind of calling your audience stupid you know what I mean <laughs> saying that but um, I mean I, under, I totally understand where they're coming from and they, they've, they've, got, they've got so many things to worry about in terms of like offending people and you know like I mean a, a funny one is in, in dog days somebody asked like, I think it ended up in the final cut in the series version but they asked if a character was a Tim and that had to get ran past an editorial policy board really? because they thought it was an offensive term. But it was said in a, you know, I mean, like as a fellow Tim to a Tim, you know, uh-huh. it was, and I never saw Tim as a derogatory word. But you know, so there's like there's certain things like that you have to jump through. You know, Do you have to like, change it. No, no, I ended up ended up being all right. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I did stu- I stood my ground in that one, but I was like, it's no fucking offensive. I mean, I'm I'm half a Tim. That I mean, it's fucking because we know all the offensive ones. I know, I know, I know it's uh, totally. Tim so it's um, but there's a lot of that. And then the other, I definitely man, <laughs> dog. There's a, a lot more swearing in dog days than what made the final cut. Mm-hmm. So it's um, I totally, totally. I mean, there's you need to jump through the hoops, but it's like you're making it for an, an audience that they understand better than you. So I, I do. I do have empathy for their side of the process, you know what mm, I mean? Because nah. I think they, 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 deep down they probably want to, want to keep it as close to what you want as possible, but they've just got all this other stuff that they have to worry nah, about. a lot of moving parts well, there, yeah, yeah, But, yeah, totally. but I, I feel, from an observational standpoint, I'm not exactly a, a, a fucking expert in any of this, but I'd find, let's see something like, you would think, let's say like Dog Days, like, like, like Fake Valley, I mean, like the scheminess, like yeah, yeah. Rough and all that kind of thing. There's going to be a certain demographic that gets it because they've experienced it. Totally. Then you've got going to have a certain demographic that have never experienced it, and it's like it's like almost a documentary. Like, is this what life is really like? 100%. And it becomes fascinating. Yeah. So I would think these two demographics alone would make up a large audience. Totally. Yeah. I totally hundred percent. I'm not. I'm, and I'm actually. I, I need to ask. I, I can find out. I'm not sure how well Dog Days did in terms of computership. But I mean, it did quite. We won the win two RTS awards and won best drama. And I mean, I, didn't, I never expected that. That was quite a big thing I mean and um, that and then the things like that and then they got a standing ovation at the film festival which was, which was beautiful man it blew my mind did but, it? Huh? I, I mean, it was really cool man and, uh, there's a video of my wee mag greeting and all that's nice, oh, but, that's nice. Um, but I was I was uh, I was in bad shape man I was steaming the, mad the, it? I was mad <laughs> it. I was uh, totally mad with it and, um, was that the time you wore the grill? No, that was recently. Oh, that was recently. Really, I, I seen that when you were I, on the I, I, Was that just to cover up your tooth? I, 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 I lost two, two, two crowns while making an experimental short film. That was going to be the biggest special effect was I got two crowns knocked out. How about so, happened? Uh, I, I can't remember what happened in life, man. It was a long time ago. So oh, I thought it was around. during the film. No, no, no. So oh. I, 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 well, the two crowns came out for that part of the film to make it look like I had my teeth knocked out. So it was like a special effect almost, but um, I lost two crowns. And, uh, right, so you had two crowns, and then aye. for this film, you got them taken, taken out. out. Aye, dude, I was, I was but they'd already been knocked out. Ah, exactly. Aye, right, aye, okay. Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> so that's just, but a method acting now. So I'm, uh, I've, I've adopted this toothless look. It seems to be working. There's a certain niche market that like ah, it. Ah, <laughs> it gives you that, gives you that kind of gritty director yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. The hat man, I like it. I can miss it when I get it fixed. I'll miss it when I get the teeth fixed. It'll be all is, it just, is it just the one or two? That's two, man. Is it two? Yeah, is it two man. to the side, sorry. Two sides, aye, man. I think I, I need to get it. It does affect my mental health, man, so I think I probably should get it fixed. Nah, it's a self conscious thing, isn't it? I totally, man. Aye. It's a. Uh, could be worse, could be the two front. Exactly. It's a wee bit of a The two front missing makes it's worse, it look I put, a bit. I'm using that Nordic spin. I use Snus, man, so it's like that lifts the lip up a bit and shows it half male. <laughs> no, I try to hide it, but. Um, <laughs> You're nearly full blown hell, Billy. You've got the fucking. I know. Snussing, you've got the missing I'm, I'm totally, man. And that's the thing. I know. I'm like Billy Bob Thornton. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably I'm closest to the Scottish Billy Bob Thornton. I think I'm need to make my Sling Blade film and that'll be. Bonnie Bob Thornton. <laughs> exactly, ah, that's that's exactly. Yeah, so uh, right now we're in a kind of limbo period but what is the future spell for James Price where are we going well this is the thing man it's like um, you know uh, 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 the, the powers that be keep saying they've got big plans for me so, but it's like I'm fucking toothless in spring when are these big plans going to take place but I do have things that are like, close to happening um, that are kind of you know uh, crime See the season, you know what I mean? And, um, no, there's a kind of mix and match, but the uh, yeah, the kind of Glasgow crime series that I feel like 
would be quite fresh and I've never seen here before and, and they're very authentic, you know what I mean? Like I've not compromised any dialogue or anything and then and it would be big. So I just need one of them to happen and then it would be life changing for me and um and I just hope it would you know, maybe put us back on the map a little bit. Because like you said, with Ireland, man, like I'm, I love Kin, I love Love Hate, I love Blue Lights. Like they're doing these really great shows and we should be matching that, you know? Like we should be putting out as good quality as them, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like, I, like I love the Irish content, man. Like even the films are great, you know what I mean? There's uh, Cardboard Gangsters and uh, there's just a lot of great movies, man, they're making and... I feel like we're kind of behind them. Exactly. We're not exactly lacking in the stories, you know what I mean? I know, that's the thing. You read, totally. the pay, read the fucking digger. You know what I mean? See if you're writing fucking content. Uh, I'm, for oh, a I can't. Oh, man, that's just I, but it's, 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 I always worry about that because I'm like, sometimes, man, you like, You've got all this content you could use, but then I, but then you're fucking putting a target in your fucking back. Not I actually have something in development that's uh, it's not it's not based on the digger, but it's like involves a kind of similar. Uh, it's a kind of it's a crime show. It's, the involves a journalist kind of thing. But, right, um, okay. Aye, so it's interesting that you say that. So there is something that might be right, well, the man. Aye, the man done it. Yeah, you know, man, you had 100%. You hit the nail on the head. Just there, man, hopefully aye. you don't think he means your audience when you're developing it or your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, that's the thing. Your audience is. Uh, ah, no, I'm the demographic. I, that's what I, I don't. And I feel like the thing is that we do put ourselves down. It's like our stuff will travel. You know what I mean? We just need to make it travel. We just need to get it down there. People will watch it. I mean, Aye, so. well, what I know the thing is as well, because I think people forget Scottish people speak Scottish. Totally. See, when people watch, like, oh, they go, like, UK rap and all oh, the people in the UK talk like this. I know. Like, as much as I don't really want to be in the UK, I accept we're there. Aye. And it's like, no, there's a lot, the top of don't speak fuck all like this. Totally, so, I know, I know. It's very different, but no, people don't know that because no, definitely. We're, we're almost like the... We're almost like the wee brother that's parked in the house that doesn't leave the house. So and true, hundred percent. And that's another thing. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about Ireland. I mean, we should be matching England's output. They mm-hmm. make some brilliant films, you know. I watched one another week, gassed up. I thought it was superb. It was about the kind of the moped phone stealing gangs. Really, really solid film. Gassed up. What was it on? Prime. I mean, I watched that. Was it? Uh, See, was one of the guys dying at the end? It was Albanian or something. Aye, ah, aye, young so. boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was good. I watched that. Enjoyed them, man. I mean, the films like that. It's like I just feel like uh, we we could make films like that that really travel well. I mean, and I just think our culture, in terms, of, I think the crime culture here has never really been captured perfectly. I mean, a lot of for the wee man was like solid film, but it's like um, there should be more stuff like that. I mean, I Definitely, because if you look at let's see, because all that that gassed up, all these films are all kind of based on that roadman culture. Totally. It's like to the death. It's like I think the world's aware there's of roadmen and yeah, uh, London yeah. is such in that man. But you look at Glasgow and like Scotland, it's totally different. There is plenty of crime. Hundred percent. Plenty of my shit, main you know? thing, man, is like you know a lot of these English shows. The gangsters are on Armani suits and like you know. But it's like you know nobody's making the stuff, but it's just a guy in a North Face and a car wash. You know what I mean? There's like, and that's the kind of stuff I'm kind of aiming for. There's a kind of grounded, Aye, but, but it's still it, big, still big for big, we still have big events. Ah, that's it. And it's there. making it relatable because you know for a fact all the people that are involved in that kind of thing are going to watch it because it's relatable. And Two hundred percent. That's right. They'll love it, man. That's uh, there's such an there's not there's about an audience there, and then also the people that aren't from that world. I mean, only from our world. Though, like they, they love it as well. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, they all love it. Like, they do. They, they'll totally eat it up. And it's just, um, they're just not being given it. Aye, no, definitely. Uh, you need to give the people what they want. Totally. Give them the desire. Totally, totally. 100%. Aye, mate. But, mate, I think that's fucking plenty for us, man. I actually really enjoyed that chat. That was, that was brilliant, chat. man. I know. I'm trying to think. Aye, man. Guys, uh, place your films on Instagram. And, uh, I most of you can see all my short films on there. Ah, check him out, man. Check him out. Uh, but that was good. Sure. I didn't even need to ask you to give yourself a shout out. You just done it. Oh, uh, like sorry, that. man. No, 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 don't be sorry. I'm glad. Desperation. No, <laughs> that was good, man. But check him out. James uh-huh. Price on Instagram. Where can you find your films? Uh, Linktree. So it's Linktree. Uh, Linktr.ee slash Pricey Films. Everything's on there. And uh, I, man, and message me. I can even send you the ones that I. I'm ashamed of that I hate. Ah, I definitely. <laughs> if you get some Scottish crime stories, send them across. You can write his I definitely, man. Hit me with some good stuff, man. Uh, I, he's I, the father, I. people. But anyway, that's enough for us. Like, subscribe, and don't get wide. Catches. <laughs>